Hi everyone, I'm Taylor Hudak, co-founder of Action for Assange, and I am at Cooney School of Law in Queens. We just wrapped up a free Julian Assange event, which was held by the Courage Foundation, and I'm joined right now by uh, the Gray Zone editor, Max Blumenthal. Max, how are you doing? Pretty good. I know it was a long day talking about uh, Julian Assange and issues related to the free press. One point that you brought up that I thought was very important was putting pressure on the candidates to speak out about Julian Assange. We know that the Sanders campaign has yet to issue a statement about Julian Assange. What do you think they need to do and what do supporters need to do to ensure that he does speak out on this issue? Well, we have to make it clear that this is an issue that is actually a winning issue, that there's a critical mass in support, not just of Julian Assange as an individual, but as on the principle of having a journalist jailed because they have views that are unpopular among the intelligence services and the elite. And there are many who will say, you know, the DNC is going to freak out if you express any iota of solidarity with the person who published the internal emails of the DNC that embarrassed them so much. And yeah, they probably will freak out, but the fact is they're already freaking out about Bernie Sanders' candidacy. They're already against him, and Bernie Sanders is already running not just for president, but for the next target of a deep state coup, which will be much more ferocious than the one that targeted Donald Trump. So he has to understand what the stakes currently are and defend Assange on the principle on, their, on the principle of international law, on the principle of free speech, on the principle of press freedom, and also on the principle of US law around extradition. It would be extremely, extremely demoralizing for Bernie Sanders supporters if Assange were extradited and hypothetically Bernie Sanders were then elected and came into office while this trial was taking place in the Eastern District Court in Virginia, uh, what would Bernie do? So he needs to put the brakes on now before such a scenario unfolds under his watch. In addition to that, many uh, people argue, in fact, that he cannot speak out on this issue because he'll get um, you know, pushback from the establishment. However, I find it highly unlikely that he would be able to face the Democratic establishment, the Republican establishment, and all of the intelligence community once elected into office and actually take a stance to make efforts to drop these charges against Julian Assange. I agree. I mean, I, can't, I don't have anything to add to that. I, I agree completely. And uh, whether he likes it or not, he's going to be exposed to the public in the same way that Mike Bloomberg is. And, you know, people walk up to Mike Bloomberg and take a selfie and say, stop and frisk. And it undoes millions of dollars of advertising when um, a candidate is exposed in that way. And Bernie Sanders, who holds the promise of so many people, uh, can demoralize them if he's not prepared with an answer on Julian Assange. And it also requires uh, behind the scenes work because you know I know people on his, in his, uh, not just on his campaign, but on his staff, and they're people who agree with us. Um, so we need to work through those channels as well. But I don't just believe in having some like street revolution. We have to deal with the reality that we're in and the reality we're in is a sort of two party duopoly with an insurgent campaign. Um, and it's important to, to work with that campaign in a constructive way until we achieve the result that we want and to be out there as a, you know, mobilizing in the streets as a critical mass to create pressure from the outside as well. And of course, this is uh, not just a Bernie Sanders problem, it's a systemic problem um, it, from the top down. Um, now, you are a journalist who, of course, covers international issues. Uh, you're an investigative journalist, so this would really impact your work, say, if Julian Assange were to be extradited to the U.S. and tried and convicted. What are your concerns specific to your own work? My concern is the, the contents of the indictment in which Julian Assange is accused with no basis of instructing Chelsea Manning on how to break into uh, a computer system that um, contained classified information. Uh, basically, the publisher is accused of providing instructions to the whistleblowing source. And so the relationship, the traditional journalistic relationship between publisher 
or journalist and source has been um, disrupted systematically and officially by this indictment. And when we saw the indictment against Glenn Greenwald by the far-right Bolsonaro government of Brazil, it basically mimeographed the indictment against Assange to accuse Glenn Greenwald of providing instructions to so supposed hackers um, to obtain information on the car wash operation which showed collusion between the Brazilian prosecutor and the judge who threw Lula da Silva, the main opposition leader, in jail. So the point is, any journalist now who doesn't oppose this threatens to be criminalized for having a source who may have classified information or may have sensitive information or may have politically inconvenient information and the slippery slope is already clear through the Greenwald indictment. Now, lastly, uh, why do you think it is taking so long for many people in the corporate media to show support for Julian Assange? Because, well, let, let's, let's consider the contents of the DNC emails that showed Glenn Thrush from Politico telling John Podesta that he would allow him to vet an article about himself, providing Podesta with an article about himself before publication so he can review it, and him, Glenn Thrush describing himself as a hack in doing so. He acknowledged that he was a hack. I mean, these journalists were exposed in these emails as basically collaborators with a powerful political apparatus. That's, they were exposed not as journalists, but propagandists. And, you know, so much was exposed in it. But, you know, there is a self-censorship among journalists because of the um, establishment hatred of Assange for the DNC leaks. There is a um, sense among corporate media that Julian Assange is not a journalist. There's a culture within corporate media that is imperialist. Uh, there's also a culture of opportunism that you don't violate the unspoken rules across the red lines because media is shrinking and you need to get to the top so you're crabs in a barrel. And so all of these factors come together uh, to produce silence. And what I talked about today was the kind of um, a construction of an imperial civil society in the U.S. through um, billionaires who collaborate with U.S. government, mm -hmm. um, Silicon Valley billionaires, and how they're funding NGOs and so-called press freedom organizations, fact-checking groups, and media organizations themselves to sort of supplant the um, traditional alternative media and drown uh, solidarity in consent. Right. Unfortunately, there are incentives for being a journalist who is essentially a mouthpiece for corporations and the intelligence yeah. community. Just look at Ken Delanian, uh, who's constantly kicked upstairs, a journalist for NBC News who was exposed for ha allowing the CIA to vet his reporting about the CIA. Uh, and then compare that to the treatment of Assange or the marginalization of alternative voices who are doing real reporting. Real journalism, right? Yeah. All right, Max Blumenthal, thank you. Thanks a lot.